All right. Well, welcome back, everyone. We've uh, sort of gotten to the point of the last panel presentation for, the, for today before we enter into a summary and a concluding session. Um, so for this panel discussion, we have three members of our workshop, pl workshop planning committee, Dr. Austin and Dr. Knight, uh, who you saw earlier in the program, and joining them on this panel is Dr. Craig Hales. Dr. Hales is a clinic, clinical reviewer in the Division of Diabetes, Lipid Disorders, and Obesity in the Center for Drug Evaluation and Research, and Office of New Drugs and Office of Cardiology, Hematology, Endocrinology, Nephrology at the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Dr. Hales is also a captain in the U.S. Public Health Service. So with that, um, we'll start off with some introductory comments. Um, and I think the slides should be up now. Okay. And so um, just to provide some comments before we enter into this session. Um, when, when is obesity a diagnosed disease? And based on what metric or measurement should we uh, make that diagnosis? So first of all, a risk factor per se is not a, di is, is not a disease. Uh, indeed, obesity related diseases can also develop in the absence of obesity. At the same time, when obesity is defined as a disease, it can have negative consequences and ramifications, such as bias and stigma, for people with excess weight. So despite excess weight, some people appear healthy. Some people show no limitations in activities of daily living, and others have no clinical symptoms associated with disease. The impact of this broad characterization of obesity as a disease based on BMI alone makes it a socially and financially intractable issue, as we've heard earlier today as well. Yet at the same time, evidence is clearly uh, showing that obesity is associated with distinct pathophysiological pathophysi alterations of tissues and organs. It has discrete clinical signs and symptoms associated with, with the state, increased risk of secondary complications. There are restrictions of daily activities and mobility as well as strong associations with diverse increasing disease burdens, such as multimorbidity. And, it, and as a result, it becomes an important focus for multimorbidity prevention. When obesity is defined as a disease, it establishes legitim legitimacy for medical treatment, for increased access for treatment and care, and may reduce weight-related bias and stigma. And so the disease status of obesity in a sense presents us with a dilemma. Furthermore, when we think about obesity and BMI in the context of moving forward, we, we certainly need more clarity of why to measure in the first place and what measurements to use. Measurement can be used for a variety of purposes. Is the measurement used for improvement or treatment? Is it used for decision-making? Is it used for accountability? Is it used for surveillance? basically to generate hypotheses, or is it used for research to test those hypotheses? In other words, the what, why, how, when, and, to, and whom to measure are important to consider. Furthermore, there is, an, there, is a, there is a great need to pay greater attention to the framing of obesity, the context, the measures, the lived experience side. So the challenge for this panel today is to provide insights and considerations about how to move beyond where we are today in the context of implications of the relationship between BMI and obesity definition and diagnosis, the social and clinical implications, as well as the lived experience. This is not a small task, but I think we have the team to do it. So, so with that, I would like to uh, uh, invite uh, Dr. Bryn Austin to the panel, to the podium, and, and present her side of the story. 